story time. I cheated because as I thought my husband cheated. He left and has not said a single word. I, 28 female, have been with my husband, 33 male, for over six years. We've been married for four and have a 20 month old son together. We met through friends at a house party and connected almost immediately. We started dating a few days after that, and the more time we spent together, the more I started to fall for him. I always had the feeling of him being out of my leg, but he never made me feel that way. After two years, we ended up getting married. We tried for a child and got a beautiful son. I always loved my husband more than anyone can imagine, but after giving birth, I gained a bit of weight. He always told me that he didn't care, that he loved me no matter what. He suggested I could start training with him at the gym. He goes four or five times a week, and that we could start this as an activity together. I said yes, but we never ended up going together for several different reasons. As time moved on and the baby started taking up more of our time, our sex life became less and less, but he always assured me that he was still attracted to me. Most of the time he would try to initiate, but I would turn him down, mostly because of myself and because I was insecure about my body. This is still a huge regret for me. He even told me we could leave the baby at our parents' house to get alone time, but for some reason I kept neglecting him. My self-esteem became worse and worse and he tried to cheer me up and encourage me. When we would go out somewhere, I could see other women looking at him or keep trying to make eye contact with him and it would bother me. One day he came home from work and he went straight to bed telling me he was exhausted. I started looking through his phone, part two. I cheated because I thought my husband cheated. He left and hasn't said a single word to me. He started looking at his phone and looking at his Instagram. I could see several chats from different women. He's been asked to go meet up for coffee or they could just meet up as friends. He always turned them down. I even saw an archived message from an ex who had messaged him out of the blue and asked if he wanted to meet up for a good time. I really don't know why, but my head started making up that he must be cheating on me with at least one of these girls. I ended up contacting an ex who I hadn't talked to in years. One thing led to another and we met at a hotel close by. At first, I just wanted some sort of payback, but we ended up having sex and I was filled with incredible regret. All of this happened during the day and my husband was at work and had no idea and never had a suspicion. It took me three days and he came home one day. We were in front of a television. I started crying and told him everything. Everything. He just kept looking at me, didn't say a single word, went upstairs, locked the door to our bedroom. I followed him and I was crying at the door, but he didn't say a single word to me. When he finally came out, he immediately left the house. I haven't heard a single word from him. I have tried to call him at least a hundred times, but he still hasn't responded and I have no idea where he is. All of this happened yesterday and I haven't heard a word from him. I'm scared of contacting his or my family because I don't want them to find out. I'm filled with regret and disgust and I don't even know why I didn't trust him. I know most of it roots down in my own insecurities, but I just want my husband back. He left me alone with our baby. What can I do to save my marriage? I remember when I was little, my grandpa had this pet crow that he found in the wild and brought home one day and it just never really left. So we wouldn't really go over to my grandpa's house a lot because he was a little, well, he was a little cuckoo, he was a little crazy, okay? But when we would go over there, he would always have something new that the crow could do, a new trick or whatever. And let me tell you, my grandfather is country, is all hell, okay? So he just would have farms and he would have animals and he just knew a lot about like the wilderness and how to survive or whatever. So I don't know how he taught this bird how to like do these little tricks. He would teach him to like do little flips and come back and forth for food and stuff like that. So when we came over this one particular time, he was like, hey kid, you wanna, you wanna see me crow do something? And mind you, he never named the crow. Me and my brother nicknamed the crow Watermelon because the crow would come over to his house specifically to eat watermelon and be on his way. So we would nickname the bird Watermelon. So he was like, you wanna see him do something? And me and my brother were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so my grandpa literally wrote a message on a receipt or whatever, and it was to his neighbor. He wrote a receipt, and he was like, hey, I have the grandkids over, send a message back. So he gave the message to the bird, and the bird flew over, and mind you, my grandpa lived in, like, the middle of nowhere. His neighbors were so far from him, so he taught the girl how to send messages back and forth from him to his neighbors. So that later on that day, the crow eventually came back with the message and was like, hey kids, it's neighbor da da da, whatever the neighbor's name was. And me and my brother were like, what? Oh my God, now we gotta send a message. How far can the bird go? How far can the bird go? I wanna see how far, I wanna send a message. So me and my, my brother are asking my grandpa, we're like, like, how far can we send the message? Like, can he come back? Like, we don't know. So my grandpa just entertaining us is like, well, you can send a message all the way to China and he'll come right back because he knows his way home. And so we're like, ah, this. so I had my dad sit down with us and write a message. And I can't remember verbatim what we wrote, but it was along the lines of like, hey, my name is Monet and this is my grandpa's crow. Send a message back. He knows his way home, right? So we had the crow 
take the letter and just fly away and flow away into the night. And I was assuming like, oh, it's going to take maybe a whole day for it to fly to China and back. Stupid little kid, right? So eventually the bird did come back and it had another message on there, but the writing was different from the uh the first letter. The message really looked like it was written by a kid, and the message read, it was like, Hi, my name is Kaya. Um, how are you? I know your grandpa. And I was like, Oh my god, like who is this? Like who in China knows my grandpa? I don't know. So I, I made my dad sit down with me and write another letter back, and I was like, What who's Kaya? The so then I have my dad write a letter back to Kaya and I'm like, wait, like, are you from China? How is it? Um, like, why are you out here? Like, I, shoot, if I was in China, I wouldn't be in the middle of the desert in the middle of nowhere, right? So then I have my dad write this letter and I have it send it back to the crow. Now, I don't know why my little kid brain, it didn't register to me. Like, this crow is coming back and forth pretty quick. But I, yeah, I didn't really pay that in mind. So the crow eventually did come back a little later on that day. And it had another note from Kaya. And Kaya was like, yes, I'm from China. She was like, I'm visiting with my my grandpa. And da 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 And she was like, it's really cool out there. Da 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 blah, blah, blah. She was like, we should play together. And I'm thinking, I'm like, how am I about to play with Kaya if she's in China? I, China's very far from my knowledge, right? So I had my dad write a letter back. And I was like, that would be so much fun. I would love to play with you, but if you're in china like i'm in america we can't play so you know the drill i had my dad put that give it to the bird and the bird flew back and came back with another note from kai and kai was like what do you mean she was like i'm visiting my grandpa in california where we were and i was like what so then i go to my grandpa and i was like what do you know i was like how do you know kaya she's from china and how do you know her da -da -da? she said she's down the street my grandpa started dying laughing. He thought that was the funniest thing. He, so my grandpa's like, there's an old Chinese couple that lives on the other side of me that has a granddaughter that comes out and visits sometime around this year. He was like, I just thought it would be funny to just give you guys the whole run around. And I'm like, so can I go outside and play? Because now you're making everybody in here mad. And it's hot in here. Ain't no AC, granddad. So I get to go outside and I... Play with Kaya and then we had a really good time we played for that one time only and then I actually never got to see her again so yeah fun time at granddad's house follow me on the gram off if you want to see more story times and crochet and just like want to keep up with me I'd love to see you there Mwah. peace am I wrong for purposefully breaking my girlfriend's high heels prior to my friend's wedding my friend had his weekend last wedding and I was a groomsman while my girlfriend was in the bridal party. My friend is a man who is 5'6", so needless to say he has issues regarding his height. The rest of us groomsmen range from 5'7 to 6'2", so we are as tall if not taller than him. He has less of an issue with this, but he did have issues with the height of the bridal party. My girlfriend is a taller gal at 5'8", and the rest of them are between his and her height. During his wedding, he decided he wanted to look a bit taller, so he brought shoe and soles that made him two inches taller. This was partially driven by the desire to not be shorter than any woman up in front. He also wanted for none of the bridesmaids to be in heels. He wanted them all in flats and that would keep them all shorter than him. His wife didn't necessarily agree with this so she didn't make it a requirement in their outfits to wear flats. So he tasked the groomsmen with talking to the ladies and getting them to wear flats. All of them agreed except my girlfriend. She said she picked out heels to wear just for this day and she was going to wear them. I tried to point out that there will be other chances but this guy only has one wedding and the nice thing to do is to just appease him. She said that she listens to the bride and the bride says she can wear heels so she will. I tried my best to convince her to just wear some flats but she wouldn't listen. Eventually it got too close to the day and while my girlfriend was practicing and one of the heels mysteriously broke, it was too close to the day to get an exact replacement so she was stuck in flats. So, you may have guessed it, it was me. And I know it was fucked up, but I'll pay to replace it for her. She didn't find out until I told her after the wedding, and she of course was not happy. She said I was policing her outfit for my insecure friend and that she wanted to look good that day. I don't think I did anything wrong as I stopped her from ruining his wedding for him. So, am I the asshole? What a baby! How fragile is his ego? I had to treat my own daughter after a car accident last night because of a drunk driver. I, 39 male, am a paramedic. I've seen some crazy as well as scary stuff working as a paramedic. Last night was for sure the worst. It was 10 p.m. getting close to the end of my shift. We got a 911 call about a car accident. When we got the call, I had a bad feeling and I didn't know why. Then when we got to the scene, I found out it was my daughter's 16 car that got hit. She was in critical condition and we had to take her ASAP. 
All of her vitals were low and then her heart stopped. We had to revive her. She made it to the hospital. She had eight broken ribs, which caused a collapsed lung and broken blood vessels, causing her heart to go into sudden cardiac arrest. She also suffered a spinal injury, and doctors aren't sure if she'll be able to walk again. They put her in a medically induced coma to give her body rest. The man who hit her was driving drunk. The only injuries he suffered were a broken wrist and some bruises. It is so unfair that my sweet 16 year old daughter who is just on her way home from work has to suffer when the drunk driver suffers from only minor injuries. I see it all the time and it's so unfair. I just needed to get this rant off my chest. I accidentally broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. This time it's not my story time, let's put on my Instagram. My husband and I have been married for five years. He's in the army, so he travels a lot for work. Most of the time, I'm home alone. And because of this, every time he comes home, I want to be with him. You know, like, do the dirty. But this man tries to avoid it. Now, when we first got married, we lived together for about a year. Everything was, I guess, normal. Sunday I've always been the one trying to initiate, Aldi. but he never really does. So back then, it wasn't like a weird thing. But now that he travels so much for work, I would assume that he would want to have sex with me. And therefore, he would initiate. Every time he comes home from traveling, all he does is lock himself in his office and try to play video games. He says that he needs to escape and that he really doesn't want to face his responsibilities when he comes home. So I'm left to do everything for him when he gets home. Like, I even have to set out his clothes on the bed, I have to make and serve all his meals, and I still have a 9 to 5 job. So I'm pretty much working year round. And I've even started paying for the bills because he asked me to. So the least he could do is treat me right and give me some sex. When I brought it up to him, he got mad. Part 2 is up. Broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. This glimmer is not my story time, it's on my Instagram. So after I brought it up that he never wants to have sex with me, he got furious. He told me that I was always breathing down his neck, that the happiest time in his life is when he's at work in the army. Now my husband's never been the super affectionate type, but he's never been like that. So I asked him again why he's being so distant and cold. He told me that I was being too clingy, and that after years of marriage, I should have been over him. Over him? So I asked him if he was over me. He looks me straight in the eyes and says, Well, it's kind of hard to be attracted to you when you're not in good shape. My husband's in the army, so as you can imagine, he is in very good shape. He's got an eight pack and is pure muscle. But I didn't know it was a requirement to be in really good shape to be married to him. When he saw the look on my face, he quickly apologized and said that he was just upset. I asked him what was going on at work and he told me that he was just having a hard time. Then I asked him if he was interested in someone at work. Of course he said no though. He told me that I was being too sensitive. So I asked him, fine, have sex with me right now. Part three is up. Accidentally broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. This claim is not my story time with me on Instagram. So I demanded the sex. I mean, I needed proof that he at least still loved me. So he takes off his pants and we start going at it. But he wasn't getting, you know. And I tried. But the more I tried, the more he complained. Then he said it was hurting. So I just went ahead and tried to sit on it. And that's when we both heard a snap. He screamed in pain and immediately said, you broke it. So we put on our clothes and headed to the ER. The doctor said that he had never seen anything like that before and that I really needed to be careful next time. So on top of my husband not giving it to me and me being totally sex deprived, the doctor's telling me that I need to be careful. My husband basically gave me the cold shoulder for two weeks. Then he told me that he was no longer attracted to me and that he wanted a divorce. Come to find out, he's gay. Not only is he gay, but he has a boyfriend and he's been with this guy for over a year while I'm working my ass off paying for the bills, doing everything for him. So so he asked me to get a divorce, but how are we going to split all our money? So I said no. I refused to let him be happy with this man while he wasted my-